Hey, welcome to the 2022 season of Sunset Rewind. I'm Kevin Dole, and with my partner here, Mo Patios, we'll be discussing, reviewing, and looking at all things Sunset League football this season. Uh, we're starting a podcast today where we're going to have various schools in to introduce you to some players and some coaches. Today, we have three gentlemen from Los Alamitos with us. We have head, we have a excuse me, defensive co-defensive coordinator and safeties coach Mike Cobley. We have Isaiah Dorsey and Gavin Porch. What can you tell me about these two gentlemen, Coach? Oh well, they've been with us, you know, for four years, and uh, you know, they're they're two of the kids that that have really helped us build this program, and uh, they saw it from that first year, you know, going four and seven, and and really struggling at times, and and, and so they went, you know, from you know the from the outhouse to the penthouse sort of, you know, and, and they're just two guys that they play everywhere, anywhere that you need them. Um, offense, defense, it doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, just two guys that we can absolutely rely on for all things, the program guys. And, and um, I'm absolutely, uh, you know, thrilled to, to have them on our team and, and to represent us as well. Now, Gavin, you're a four-year uh, starter on varsity, correct? Yes, sir. That's, that's impressive. That's quite a feat. And uh, two-time uh, – all first team Sunset League as well. Mm -hmm. And then over here we have Isaiah Dorsey, who last year won the prestigious Defensive Back of the Year Award in the Sunset League, a league that is heavy, heavy, heavy with great defensive backs. So that's quite an honor. So congratulations to you Thank on you. that. Thank you. Coach, I wanted to ask you as a defensive coordinator, you've got Gavin and Isaiah coming back, plus a lot of other guys at the skill position. Can you do things defensively with the group that has as much experience as they do that you might not be able to do in the past because you just don't have those logged hours? I mean, can you add some more intricacies because they have so much experience? Yeah, I mean, that that's the key. These two guys are, you know, the key to that because I just, I mean, it, it's almost non it's almost nonverbal at this point when we're talking about different defenses, what we're in. We can make one hand signal or I can look at them a certain way and, and they know what's going on. So... We can move from our base with these guys. We can move from our base defense to any other, any one of our packages, and they can play multiple spots. So um, Isaiah's played linebacker in the past. Both of them have played nickel, strong safety, free safety, corner at times. Um, so you know they're both versatile, and and the fact that we know each other so well and we trust each other. You know they trust that we're going to put them in the best position to succeed, and I trust that you know that they are going to you know execute whatever it is that we put in front of them. Okay. Now, you played defensive line at Western for the legendary Jim Howe. No, I played defensive back. <laughs> oh, I take that back. But you played for the legendary Coach. Coach is Howell. one of those fast guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> After your high school career was over, you ended up becoming a teacher. How has your pro progression gone from as a coach to where you are now? Where have you been all these years from when you first started coaching to where you're at now? Where have I been, like – in terms of different schools? Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. Um, well, I coached one year at Western when I was, you know, 18 years old, straight out of high school. And, you know, luckily, you know, I went for a varsity position and they gave it to a guy who was a year older than me, which, you know, I felt at that time I was already a better coach than some people, but my ego, you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> you get it. And then I, and then I went to school and, uh, you know, I played rugby in college and all that stuff. And then um, I started coaching in 1994 and uh, one of my, you know, I, I had friends at Modern Day, and uh, so um, I, they asked me to coach, and I was like, I don't have time, you know how it is. And, and then I went and met with Coach Iman, who we coached together. We're co-defense coordinators today. This is 1994. That's how long we've been together. And, you know, he had 100 kids out there by himself with a one-year-old baby who's Casey, who's now 28 years old in his arms and he was coaching a hundred kids by himself and he was doing a good job, you know, and he just handed Casey to me. He goes here, hold him, you know, <laughs> and that that's that we've been together ever since. So 94, 95, 96 freshman football at modern day helped out with the varsity. You know, Eric Johnson is my mentor. That's who I consider, you know, I learned, you know, most of the defense from, um, and then, um, and then we went to Cyprus in 1997. So I was a position coach. Iman was the defensive coordinator until he stepped down to, to you know, because he had young kids and stuff like that. And uh, and then I stepped in as the defensive coordinator kind of during the dark years of, of Cyprus football there. And then um, 
And then Coach Fenton came in 2005 till 2009. I was the I was the defensive coordinator during those years. And then um, in 10 and 11, I was the head coach. You guys both were with me back then, and uh, you know we were fairly successful during that time. Uh, and then I coached one year at, uh, you know, I left Cyprus as a result of some politics and my mom was ill and things like that. Um, but uh, I coached one year at junior college. And then I, and when Coach Fenton came back to the county, I, I joined him at, at Fountain Valley for three years. And we've been at Los Al ever since. So I'm very happy that, that we've, we've stuck together. And, uh, we, you know, we're really seeing kind of the fruits of our labor at this point. Well, it certainly seems to be working out. You look at the success you've had the last couple of years, and it just seems to be growing and growing and growing. So you're definitely in a good place. Yeah, talent has a lot to do with that, right? You can be the greatest coach in the world, but if you don't have the guys, you know, you're not going to. When you got dudes like this, all of a sudden you become a very good defensive coordinator, right? Yeah, yeah, you look better, especially when you have big guys up front and guys that can cover in the back. You know, it's like, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's still about blocking and tackling in the end, right? If you can't. Day. If you can't block and tackle, you can't play football. So that's you know that that's something I can absolutely count on these guys for. What's that line? It's not the X's and O's. It's the Billies and the Joes. Yeah, Johnnies and Joes, whatever you yep. want to call it. Yeah, yep, yep. yeah. I mean, I mean, there's something to be said about you know having a program and these guys knowing the defense. And I mean, the, the schemes are part of it. But in the at the end, you know, I I was talking to a coach, you know, who seemed to think that you know, all the work that he did on the weekend and my kids know exactly who, you know, what plays come in next and all that stuff. And we work hard and we try and put them in the best positions. But at the end of the day, you know, when it's Friday night, we say, you know, I often say to Coach Fenton, you know, I just say the hay's in the barn, you know, like we've done everything we can do. Now let's just let them play and try and enjoy it. I didn't do that when I was a young coach. I, I didn't enjoy it. You know, I, I, I stressed out over every single play, you know. A lot of coaches do don't feel bad. That that's very natural in that in the profession you're in. Right. So, coach, you alluded to the uh, four and seven season when Gavin was a freshman. Mm -hmm. Since then, Los Alamitos has met with tremendous success, being the back to back Sunset League champions, uh, nine and one last year, and then getting into the open division of the CIF playoffs, which is widely regarded by anybody who covers high school football or knows high school football is the toughest division of high school football playoffs in the United States. Correct. So looking back on last season, what would be your overall critique of, of how the Griffins played? I mean, we had some really, really high moments, you know, um, we played some good games and, uh, but we didn't, we didn't finish some games that we should have, like we should have absolutely finished the, the Santa Margarita game. You know, we played a great half and executed and played great. And then the second half, uh, just everything went wrong, you know. Um, can, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, right. For you guys, sometimes you can lose and it can be a positive thing that you can learn from your mistakes. I watched that game on TV, in control at half, and then the second half, like Coach said, some offsides dropping passes, and you looked like a completely different team. Yeah. Was it just a lack of focus? Did you guys come in too confident? Or I mean, What happened, and what can you learn from experiences like that so you don't make that mistake again? Because clearly, in my opinion, you were the better team, at least that first half, and then something just changed. Yeah, just like a lot of mental errors and just our team just falling out of it, getting too cocky. Uh, egos getting high before we even started. And did the coaches address that with you, like moving forward? Like, listen, guys, we can't go into halftime thinking, all right, game over. The backups will be in in a, in a few minutes. I mean, you got to close it out and finish. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, that's something you think you've learned from and will give you more experience going into this year so you don't make that mistake again? Yeah. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, I want to ask you a little bit more about last season. And You finish 9-1, and one, you defend your league championship for the second straight year, and your reward is you get to go to the Open Division and play St. John Bosco. Now, you put up 38 points that game, and up until that point, they hadn't given up that many points to anybody. The problem is you gave up a lot of points. So when you look at the talent you have on this year's team coming back, the players you've added, and all the conditioning, the running, the weightlifting, the offseason, my question is this. Do you guys feel you've closed the gap with the St. John Boscos of the world to not only compete but beat them? And can you possibly do it for three rounds? Because the thinking is, and again, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say you're probably going to make the playoffs, right? And even if you run the table, one yeah. loss, maybe two losses, there's a good chance you're going to go back to that open. So have you closed that gap in your mind with those teams to compete and possibly beat them and win the whole thing? Yeah, I think we got all the puzzle pieces we need. We just need to put the puzzle pieces together and become one as a team. 
When you look at that film, is it one of those things where at that point there was just too much of a gap in terms of talent or were there some mistakes you made that it maybe could have been a lot closer? If you evaluate that game and you played it again, would it have been a similar result? Um, I mean, I they were legit. We did, we did have a lot of mistakes that game. Okay. Defensively, um, just like missing our gaps, uh, not covering the right guy in wrong coverages. Missed a lot of tackles. Yeah, missed, missed a, a lot, lot of tackles. tackles. Stuff like that. But a lot of times in that game, we were outmanned. Yeah, I mean, you sure. know, our front, we, we were outmanned up front. And there's a reason why they were the top team in the nation. I mean, let's, it's not by chance. So, Isaiah, let me ask you this. You haven't put the pads on yet, but you know you've got a good team coming. Mm -hmm. How would you stack up this year's Los Al team against last year's? Who are you making the favorite? I don't know. That's hard. I think <laughs> for sure. I th I think I think we got it this year. Yeah. I think we got it this year. Okay. I think we have a better defense this year than we did last year. Do you care what division you go in? I mean, nobody wants to lobby to go to a lower division, but I think in teams like you, Mission Viejo, are arguably the two top teams in the county, public school wise. But then you get put in this division, which is a whole different level. Does it really matter to you? Do you want to compete against the best? I mean, I look at your schedule, and certainly you're willing to. But when it gets to the playoffs, would you just rather go Division One play against a public school, or do you want to go open? We want to go open, for sure. Yeah. We okay. want the competition. Okay. For sure. We yeah. talk about it all the time. So we I hear do. a lot of people lobbying, we want to go D1, but you guys say, no, no, keep us up. We'll yeah. battle those guys. For sure. Yeah, we think, we think we're the best. We're going to play the best. We're going to compete with the best. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a rough experience for us defensively last year. I mean, they ran the ball on us. <laughs> and... Uh, but the experience of playing there in front of all of those, in that little band box stadium in front of all of those people, you know, with the jumbotron and the smoke, it was an experience. Right yeah, you. yeah, yeah, it was an experience that we will never forget. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. I mean, we, you know, you you guys know, you know, when we played La Habra way back when, it was still an awesome experience. The game didn't go our way, but the experience, you know, is something that we'll remember for the rest of our lives. Well, it sounds like as a team, you learned a lot and gained a valuable experience from that game. So you'll be, you know, much uh, more mentally prepared for it this year if, if and when that happens. Well, the thing, I remember that game. I was there. You guys scored on your first drive. The touch, I'm like, oh, man, could it happen? And then the very next play touch, and I think the guy went 80 yards. I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe yeah. not. <laughs> right through the middle of the gap. We right, right. That. I mean, that's yeah, part we of just weren't quite ready for that speed. We hadn't seen that and the kind lineman, of speed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we haven't seen it. We didn't see it. Hard for us just to jump in there with that. All right, gentlemen, we got a game. Coach, you're going to play two? All right. I'm going to give you each three pieces of paper. The good news is there is no math. All right. So <laughs> this is called F-H-C-M-M-A-G-O-G. -G. I'm going to read you a situation. You're going to tell me which teammate best fits that description. Okay. And then you got to explain your answer. <laughs> All, right. All right. Coach Fenton at some point is going to have to step down and retire. Which current player would make the next best head coach for Los Al when that happens? Current player. player. Current player. Mm. All right, we got Coach Cole, but he's got his answer. <laughs> no, he, he, I see wandering eyes, but understand there is no right or wrong answer. It's just an opinion. Can we say it or just... Yeah, go ahead. Who do you? We'll start with you, Coach. I I, I put Isaiah because Isaiah. I saw, okay, why Isaiah? I, I just right. saw him. You know, he was the powder puff head, head coach. You know, and he he he, he, he was <laughs> There's just, a lot of value I, in that. It carries over, right? Yeah, it, but he. I mean, he realized how hard it. They realized real yes. fast how hard it is to be a coach. Yeah. Isaiah did. You know, I don't remember. Were you coaching that team too, Porchy? No. no. Yeah, he stayed away from it. You know, <laughs> both these guys have girlfriends. You know, they probably don't want to get have, too. That was during baseball season. Oh yeah, that's baseball. right. Yeah. Gavin plays baseball, too, and Isaiah plays basketball. Coaching uh, people for the first time can be like herding cats, and it sounds like you found that out firsthand, for sure, right? For okay. sure, Especially yeah. with the girls. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Isaiah, who do you have? I got Vodka. Vodka? Yeah. Why okay. Vodka? That's why I got he, Oh, a, you both went with yeah. the same person? Okay. Tell us a little bit about Vodka. He's a great leader. Yeah. You know, he. we had a couple, was it a month ago, we were in the weight room, we were doing planks. He, he got us all, he got us all ready. Yeah. It, Within yeah. the first week of him just being here, he was just a leader. For sure, it just changed. straight out the gate, and it woke up some people. Like some really, guys, just have that innate gift. Yeah. You can't coach that. You can't teach it. He's just one of those guys he just has that naturally. Passion. Yeah. Awesome. What do you got, coach? You guys, fans of the MMA at all? Mm, a little bit. A little bit. I'll, I'll so, watch a little. I was wondering if there was one football player on your team 
who you had to have fight in a world championship MMA match and get in the octagon and be broadcast Damien. all over the world, who would that guy be? Damien, for sure. For sure. And that's the guy you don't want to go against, right? No. Why, why do you say him? <laughs> why him, Isaiah? You know, he's like six. How tall is he? Like six three, six four. Six four. He's from Jordan, so yeah. I, don't, I don't think I have to say much for sure. Okay, Damien. we got you. We got you. He's the guy that you would uh, want to represent the Griffins <laughs> in the octagon. For sure, for sure. Awesome, awesome. Coach, who do you got? I got Caleb. <laughs> Caleb, you know, he's 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 a strong guy. You know. So Caleb and Vodka, could that be a potential? Oh, well, ooh, he, that be yeah, ugly? Caleb and Vodka, you, no, you know, you, you that might cause like a destruction in the world. <laughs> like yeah. the, like you an earthquake. Feel yeah. Rumbling yeah. here, miles you, away. You don't want to make either one of them guys angry. Them two no. lit the gym together. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like if you ever were trapped underneath like an automobile, that those are the guys you want there mm -hmm. for sure. Nice. Last, last one, gift a gab. The scenario is this. You're 10 minutes late for practice, and you know you're in trouble. Is there one teammate you want at your side that would give you the best chance to talk your way out of the jam you are in? Who has uh, got the gift of gab? Who's the talker? The talker or like Who can talk the your way out of the coaches giving you some extra conditioning? Who can make, him, make the coaches laugh? <laughs> or get you out of a ticket if you yeah. run a red on Los Al Boulevard. I got mine. I don't know. I, I guess mine. I'll go last. OK. Who do you have, Coach? I got Malachi. Yeah, yeah. Malachi. Yeah, Malachi. Is because that a consensus? He has, yeah, yeah, I mean, Mal Malachi can like he will make you laugh. He will. He can make fun, straight up make fun of you, and and there's no hurtfulness in it at all. Like he just makes you laugh, and you just go, okay, buddy. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so Malachi. Did you have Malachi too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, who's and this? You don't have to write this one down. Who's the last coach you want catching you showing up late to practice? Who's this going to give you? Oh, Coach Venn. Oh, for sure. <laughs> if he sure. sees you, it's over. Yeah. It's over. I still have nightmares about showing up late to practice. That's like my number one nightmare. You know. You know what? We got a little bonus round here. Let's do it. I want to see a coach's impersonation. Coach Which coach can you impersonate, Isaiah? Who can you impersonate, Gavin? It can be Bible, Schneider, Coach. And let's see if Finn. the other player can guess who you're impersonating. <laughs> Any coach on the Los Alamitos <laughs> coaching staff. In fact, I'll up the We end. know you guys do that. If you pull it off, Coach Doe will take you next door to the wild do some by your <laughs> right? It's on Coach. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got that one. You got that one. Oh, no. I, I knew you guys had one. Every, everybody find, does. I got to find the coach. Like, you want to think about that and get us a I, I could do my dad pretty well. Let's hear what your dad sounds like. No, nah, I do that in front of him too much. <laughs> um, well, we don't want to get you in trouble here, but yeah, if there's a coach that's easy to do, do it. If not, <laughs> we'll move on. I don't know if there's a coach that's easy to do. I've never heard Russ. I mean, I've never really heard um, the guys do it too much. Usually, yeah. it's the line guys. Yeah. That are good How about at that. this? An they expression that you hear from a coach all the time. An expression or saying that you often hear. The same coach saying. Mm -hmm. Like you'll be hearing that in your head 20 years after you've left Los Al because it's just their little thing, their catchphrase. I can I can hear Coach Iman's like deep voice you know, when he yells. Um, it's got that bass that carries across the field. Yeah. Okay. When we go hands high, I'll always remember that. Just hand, just them saying yeah. hands high. Mm -hmm. Coach Cubs gives that for it, hands high. I don't know. There's not really any sayings I can remember. Can you do any impersonations of any teammates? Teammates? <laughs> I see Isaiah laughing, so I'm taking that as a yes. <laughs> I don't want to be disrespectful. I'm trying, I don't There's know. a fine line when you, yeah, exactly, when you yeah, exactly. imitate someone. Yeah, okay. Well, we do don't want to get you in trouble. Mind? Do you have someone in mind? I don't know. Yeah, it's too bad you guys can't do Ethan. That would be the best one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's even, funny. Uh, Ethan, I'll just like be so nonchalant about everything. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll talk about that later. Let's get into this season, right? That's what we're here for. Talk football. Um, Coach Lowe's going to talk a little bit about the Sunset League. We've talked about many times just how competitive it is, but I'm looking at your non league schedule, and you'd be hard pressed to find another team that's playing the quality and the level of the teams you're playing. I see Surveyed on here, who finished in the finals last year of the Open. Santa Margarita, another Trinity League team. The one team you've lost in the regular season over the last two years. That's a nice payback game. But there's a couple teams on here. Garcist, we've got a team from Utah and a team from Florida. Coach, can you tell us a little about those teams and what we can expect? I know the Florida game is actually going to be on ESPN. Tell us a little bit more about these teams and the kind of players they have on those teams. Yeah, Garcist is, is, is a good um, 
Catholic school from Bakersfield, you know, uh, we played them way back when I was the head coach and, and they beat us actually. Um, and, um, you know, they they have a lot of athletes, you know, um, they, they were spread. They ran a lot of option, um, last year. Um, but they were, they're a talented team. Um, and then heritage is, you know, one of the better teams in the country. I think that, you know, they've in different, that's the team from Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, they're in different publications, you know, they're in the top 20 in the nation depends on what, what, what publication you look at. And they have a running back. That's a huge running back. That's going to Ohio state. And they got a receiver that's ranked among the best athletes in the country. So they're, they're going to be loaded. How did that get all set up? Because you have ESPN flying you out there. They're putting you up. You don't have to fundraise anything. And it's going to be on national TV. I mean, that's a pretty cool situation. Did they reach out to you? Did you? I think it was a little of both. Okay. You know, we look. We were looking to travel, and then they had this showcase, Broward County Showcase. I think there's six or eight games or something that weekend. And, okay. And, uh, you know, because of um, – we tried to set something up with uh, – with, um, um, Arch Manning's team, and, mm-hmm. and oh. they, they, yeah, they turned us down. Bishop Newman, what a yeah. great matchup with the two quarterbacks. I mean, right. that would have been a great, yeah. I think we would, I think we would have smashed them though. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, so it was a little of both, and then in the end, it was it was falling through because they weren't. Once the gas prices went up, fuel prices went up. They were like, oh yeah, we're not going to pay for it. And Coach Fenton got on the horn like one last chance because we were having a hard time filling our schedule. And he ended up getting on the horn with a couple other guys, and then they got it together, and they just said, you know, we're paying for everything. So airfare, dinner, lunch, you know, hotel re- reservations, everything. I don't know. They may even be getting, like, a gift bag, you know, like the bowl uh, games or PS5 something. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think it's going to be that. but okay. well, You never know. But yeah, <laughs> we're looking for that. And then uh, Basha, they, they, they're supposed to be pretty much loaded as well. Uh, they have uh, seven or eight guys that are D1 commits. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So by the time league starts, you guys are going to have a really good idea of where you're at in terms of from last year to this year. Um, I want to ask you about that real quickly, scheduling. Because you guys have improved so much over recent years, is it hard to get a team to play yet and to the point where you're going to Bakersfield, Arizona, Florida, because just nobody around here wants to do it? Yeah, I mean, you, you have to kind of pick your, you know, do you want to play the, the Trinity League, because they'll pretty much They're play. They're probably the ones that they'll, will. They'll play anybody, you know, but we don't really want to play the whole Trinity League, you know, and then after that, you know, it's like Trinity League, maybe Corona Centennial's game to go, you know, like all of the top dogs that, that, but the that are willing tear, to play. But the wear and tear, that quality can take its toll on yeah. you, so that's what you got to weigh. Yeah, you know, we, we need some games, but, you know, there's no days off on that preseason schedule. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. I don't see any uh, free board, uh, you know, on the bingo, you get that free space. I look at your schedule, I don't see one of those free spaces. It's going to be 10 battles, and then that's before CIF even starts. When I looked it up, it was the highest, the highest ranked preseason schedule in California. Yeah. So Maybe in the country, you know. Find me a hard Yeah, one. I mean, that is definitely a challenging schedule that's going to prepare you well for the Sunset League. So as we move into the Sunset League, you know, obviously Los Al's two-time defending champion. Everybody's going to be, uh, you know, looking to knock you guys off. Who do you see as being your toughest competition in uh, league this year? What do you think, Isaiah? Um, last year was for sure the Green School. They, they <laughs> oh, it's one of those deals you he, can't say that name. You will not say that. Yes. I get it. They're from Huntington Beach. From Huntington Beach. It was for sure them last year. They lost a couple of players. So I, don't, I, I really don't know um, what they have. They, they lost Nico, a really good receiver over there. They lost a really good running back, a couple of really good receivers, alignment. So I, I really don't know this year who, so who's going to be the best. If there was a team that you might want to look out for that might sneak up on people, who do you think that would be, Gavin? Mm, that might sneak out? Um, Huntington had some young guys last year. Um, Outside of Los Al, who would you pick to win the Sunset League if you had to pick a team other than yourselves? Probably Edison. You think Edison? Yeah. You mean the green team? The green team. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm getting <laughs> in trouble here. I'm trying to save you from yourself. CDM's going to be good. Their yeah, quarterback's CD, oh, good. Yeah, they have a really good wide receiver. They have a re- running back returning. Yeah. They're, they're going to be good. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think CDM's going to be our toughest game this year. They have a couple good receivers and uh, Cooper Hodge and David Razor. Those two are my boys. So okay. they're going to be good. And that's good that you guys, you know, know your competition. I see you're, you know, very involved. You know, you know, not only the teams you're playing, but their personnel as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, it, it's crazy. At, like these passing leagues and stuff like that, they're just all chatting it up. I mean, I saw Isaiah, you know, during the tug of war at Mission Viejo, he's chatting it up with Mikey Matthews, and you know, they they've all been playing, you know, with the same groups of guys since they were, you know, very very young. So. It's crazy. It's not like when we were in school, you know, where you you know you knew who people were, but you didn't talk to them, right? Yeah, you know, right. or there was a fight somewhere, right? <laughs> and just as a disclaimer, we cover all the Sunset League, so you can call Edison the Green Team. We're going to refer to them as Edison, <laughs> um, just to keep that clear. We want to make sure we're pro promoting every team in the league. But um, you got some great games coming up this year. We're definitely looking forward to watching that. Absolutely. Absolutely. One last thing, Coach, I want to talk to you about, and you guys have made it clear, you don't care what division you go. You just want to play anyone, anywhere, anytime. Clearly, you've proven that with your schedule and everything else. If you could change anything about CIF or tweak it, I know last year you had on Kent Bikel, who did a really good job kind of spelling out the difference between the old CIF format and the new one. Would you tweak it at all, or do you like the system? Because in some cases, the intended consequence worked. I think the Newport Harbor story is a great one, but then you look at someone like yourselves or Mission Yale, and it's like, would you make any changes? Yeah, I would. I would, um, and and it's not really the division, um, whatever you call it. One, let's say one and two instead of open one. Right. You know, once you pull those schools out, I wish it was more regional. Like I think that Orange County at that point should have, you know, three divisions in Orange County because it means more to the kids when they're playing people that they know or at least schools they've heard of. We, you know, people are traveling all the way to Ventura for games. They don't. Temecula. They don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't know people out there. They. You know, and, and sometimes they don't travel. I think it would be way better to have, like, re, you know, we used to have more regional conferences. Absolutely. And, and, and I think it would mean a lot more to the guys. Like, I think if they had, like, Orange County 1, 2, and 3, you know, pull out Division 1 and 2 teams. And then it, it, the next qualification is your Orange County one, and they played for a championship in Orange County two. I don't know how many. I think there's like 70-something teams in Orange County. So I think you could do probably three divisions and just, you know, let it play out. You know, then at least you could say, yeah, you have or Orange County Division one champions. I wish they would do something like that. But, you know, that's after you pull out because, you know, some teams – you know they're gonna travel like we travel we we have a lot of fans that follow us and stuff like that we travel you know um modern day travels you know a lot of these right. teams they travel so you're still gonna have fans at the game but i think when you get into like you know division three four five lower you know divisions or whatever i think it would mean more to them if they had more regional conferences good deal good idea good idea well we're about almost ready to wrap it up, but we have a little challenge for you gentlemen if you're up to the task. Coach Pario, should you help me out here? Uh-oh. <laughs> we are going to have a little contest between all these Sunset League players that come on the show this year, and it's a cup stacking challenge. Okay. Have you seen this on TikTok or YouTube or any of that stuff? Cup stacking? So here's the dealio. The dole man's going to time you guys. What you have to do is stack these cups into a pyramid at level five, four, three, two, and one, right? We're going to time you. Okay. We'll take the best of your two scores, and this is a competition against all the other teams in the league. The winning team we're going to bring back at the end of the season, okay. and we're going to hook you up with a couple gifts, all right? So, so you guys are working with each other, but if you get the better time, we'll take yours. So if you okay. drop yours, it ain't over. All right. All right. So you're going against the entire Sunset League here. Right, okay. This is for the cup. Championship of five, 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 five I'll go as soon as you have the first cup hit the ground. I'll hit the timer. So you have to stack them in a pyramid and then unstack yep. them back to the way it is now. Wait. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're gonna stack them up, make your period, and then and break then, it all down and get it back yeah. to how I handed to uh, yeah. right there. So you have to start with them all right. stacked. All right. Ready, set, go. Is off to a good start, trying to figure out where he wants to oh, play so up. First fall of the game. No. All right, Gabby, you're going to have to step up. Bro. Put, put that one together, Isaiah. Oh, uh, we there got some go. uh, skill going on here. This will definitely help you in physics class. Oh, oh Gavin oh, almost oh, had it there. Oh, Isaiah's close. Now stack him back up. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Oh. Fumble. Stop. What do we got? 
38.78 seconds for Isaiah Dorsey. So far, the leader in the competition. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that one's not going to stand football, up. Not football, not cup stacking. Yeah, yeah not so. cup stacking. Thank God. The bad news, I don't know if that's going to hold up. No, I don't think you never so know. You never know. I'm glad to see they're not spending all their time on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Speaking of which, if you guys have any uh, social media handles you'd like to get out there for everybody, go ahead and feel free to uh, give them right now. I'll go first. No, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, Twitter, uh, I underscore Dorsey 20. There you go. Yeah. Be sure to follow Isaiah Dorsey on Twitter. He's going to be making a lot of great plays this year, as will Gavin Porch. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. It's been wonderful having you folks from Los Alamitos in here. That'll about wrap it up for the show. I'm Kevin Dole with my partner, Mo Patios. And a quick reminder, whether you are a Baron, a Charger, a Griffin, Oiler, Sailor, or Sea King, here at Sunset Rewind, we've got you covered. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.